Perfect. Istanbul 1700, an immersive 3D tour of the historic Istanbul Peninsula. So for a quick glance, we will start from the inner courtyards of the Topkapi Palace. You can see a rustic gazebo in the distance, and our avatar is enjoying the breeze from a beautiful nanite foliage on a bright day in the Bosphorus region. So now, let us get out of game mode for an aerial view as we move diagonally across the landscape. So, on the right in the inner court in the outer courtyard of the Topkapi Palace is the Hagia Irene. On the left is a modular residential area of the time. Then you have the Grand Hagia Sophia, and then make sure not to miss the Sultan Ahmed Park. We are now approaching the Blue Mosque, standing in its serene architectural glory. So, my name is Gautam Vagesna. I'm a 10th grader from Northern Virginia. And my mentor, Charlene, has been a guiding light in navigating through the ups and downs, the stressful moments, and the many hard choices we have had to make to find our way forward. My passions lie in researching history, urban studies, and its impact on civics and policymaking. So combining these passions with the latest interactive technologies available to the world of game making, I have attempted to recreate a part of the architecturally rich walled region of Istanbul. Among the among historical urban centers, Istanbul was an easy choice. The Ottomans were pioneers in urban planning, and as a natural harbor with the prime geographic location between Europe and Asia, this region has been thriving as an urban center since the 7th century. Throughout history, it has been among the largest cities in the world consistently. So, we will cover our inspiration for the models, the techniques used in modeling, before we move on to the landscape and foliage. Initially, a lot of time was spent on finding, cross finding and cross-referencing sources. The Ottomans were pioneers in the field of urban planning, so there's a lot of information available on the public domain. So this is, this is our simplest, most replicatable model unit of the massive Theodosian walls that acted as a three-layer protection system for the city. The outermost, the outermost layer was used with a moat on areas bordering land. The meshes were, are built and separated with the final textures in mind. I've learned to appreciate the importance of colors and textures for their crucial role in bringing an object to life. So here on Unreal Engine, the textures are adjusted for tiling and opacity. The Blue Mosque, the Blue Mosque has been modeled for, is guided from blueprints. Each unit was built separately. As you can see, the beauty lies in the symmetry of the architecture. The Blue Mosque exemplifies classical Ottoman architecture, combining with traditional Islamic and Byzantine architectural elements. In replicating a true-to-life model, it is not possible to find best fit materials in archives and free libraries. So you have to just create and customize materials close enough to multiple camera angles and lighting used. We have used tools like Simplegon for mesh reduction and 3D optimization. Interiors of the, the interiors of the Blue Mosque are an inspiring collection of intricate mosaics and detailed artisan work. This, however, was not in the scope of our work. In addition to Unreal and Blender add-ons, Autodesk 3ds Max and RenderDoc were used to, to overcome the import and export limitations of these tools. Hagia Irene was built and textured in Blender. This was completed at very on in the project, so simpler techniques like texture painting and some UV editing were used. Textures from online images and databases were used. This has not been retextured in Unreal Engine. So the Hagia Sophia is a well documented, is very well documented. So it has also been guided with the help of blueprints. The very large collection of objects you can see is after using mesh reduction and mesh droning techniques to avoid the nightmare when we land them in Unreal Engine. Our inspiration is a very popular image, which attests to what we have seen in the blueprints, that the base of one of the pillars is structurally different, because this monument has been used as a cathedral, a mosque, a museum, and then converted back into a mosque. The colors and UV tiling are customized to best suit the rendering process, produced by the sun, sky, and directional lighting of this project in Unreal Engine. The, the Topkapi Palace. Each model, came, each part came with its own complexity. 
The palace is a large collection of smaller structures, courtyards, and towers. The palace, which showcases impressive Ottoman architecture, was residence to the Ottoman sultans for nearly four centuries. So a Milan of architectural styles and decorations can be seen. However, this is a the basic layout has been preserved. Unlike the Hagia Sophia or the Blue Mosque, this model has not been retextured on Blender. The residential area, we have attempted to model only one modular residential area, which is completely built and the interiors of all the houses are accessible to browse. The walled region in the 15th century is documented to protecting a 40,000 to 50,000 count population. And the district system implemented by the Ottomans had many neighborhoods. The modest housing units were my first step when I was getting my feet wet, wet with Blender and Unity. All player movements and the gaming menu were initially pro programmed with C Sharp and Unity. It, but I have not seen the environment come to life until volumetric clouds, exponential height fog, and sun sky li lighting of Unreal Engine's rendering capabilities was used. This and the issues we've had with the peninsula landscape pushed the, de the decision to, put, to shift to Unreal Engine from Unity. Instead of having the avatar run through the length of the peninsula, the tab key can be used to spawn an avatar on the next monument. The landscape here is true to scale and covers the area between the Marmara shoreline and the Blue Mosque. To measure and cross-check the landscape, we have used incredible technology from Cesium Ion, Blender OpenStreetMaps, Google Photorealistic 3D Tiles, and Google Map Tiles API. You're watching the progress, the you're watching the project progress through stages. The landscape here is covers an area of 1.4 by 1.6 kilometers. We have used the standard UE metric of one pixel to one meter to get a quad count. We have taken a two-part approach. First is calculating the landscape size, the number of landscape components, and the quads and sculpting it. Two was putting the historical roadmap down. Then, using image overlay and maximum strength on sculpting tools, we've been able to bring the peninsula to shape. An alternative to this approach would have been to use height maps, but with this approach, there would have been issues with landing our models, which were all built on flat bases. So we have created a decal. So we have created a decal as a guide to texture paint the pavements, which I learned is the best way to do something for this scale, even after trying SP lines and road decals. So parks and gardens held a prominent place in, our, in the urban architecture of this region. We have attempted not to recreate, but bring some of the semblance to the Sultan Ahmed Park, given its prominence with the location of our monuments. The rest of the foliage is an extensive use of foliage assets available on the UE store. Being transparent, none of the nanite trees have been modeled as part of this project. Nanite technology is compute and resource intensive, so, we've, so we have carefully used a combination of nanite trees of varied resolutions to balance the performance and avoid crashes. So this is the game mode slide. I will come back to this later. The conclusion. When I proposed this project, I was told it was an ambitious undertaking, which I realized very early on. In addition to the research work, there was a steep learning curve with all these tools, but the, possib the possibilities kept me motivated. 600 hours later, I'm very fulfilled with the outcome and the appreciation it has been getting. I am now confident that I can take on greater endeavors without hesitation. History is a collective learning, our, inher our inherited treasure to be cherished by all. It helps build an understanding across cultures. Urban planning molds the quality of life of its residents. The intent with which a city is built shapes its culture and how it serves the people for the centuries to come. Although we have created four monuments and one neighborhood, the region is so architecturally rich that no single model can do it justice. Yet for a student of history, an engaging and captivating experience with an immersive model can shift one from merely consuming facts to be able to comprehend and opine and contribute to the area. So these are my resources and tools used. That is all. What an incredibly cool presentation. And uh, I'm glad you counted the hours. 600 hours of, of work into this project is a an incredible endeavor. Um, just as a reminder for everyone, if you have questions for Gautam, 
go ahead and put them into the Q&A. Um, a question from Sarah, how did you decide on the textures and colors and were there sources you used? So we didn't have much freedom in deciding what textures and colors to use. We tried to make it as close to life as possible. So we didn't have much freedom in that. Um, the, uh, so one interesting thing, the library, the old library of Constantinople, which is now the library of Istanbul, preserves many pictures and how do I, uh, historical archives of what these buildings looked back in the uh, back in the 1700s. So that is how we decided. And our main source was the archives and library of Istanbul. Amazing. 